Hey, Bio30. As part of our biotechnology material to wrap up Unit C, I wanted you to know something about how DNA fingerprinting is done. We're working at about a junior high level of understanding, enough to give you the foundation that you can go deeper if you choose to. Um, and I found a great little applet online. Unfortunately, it only works on our old school Microsoft uh, Flash, or sorry, Explorer. So here it is. We have some sort of a crime and we have some saliva left behind and seven possible culprits. We need to identify who's who. We could also use this for a paternity test, um, for other crime scene sorts of investigation, family relatedness, that sort of thing. Pretty old technology by this point, actually. It's about 20, 30 years old. So, what we're going to do is take our sample DNA from the crime scene and from each of our potential suspects or fathers, whatever we have, and cut it up into tiny pieces with something called a restriction enzyme. Now, at this point, I would like you to pause the video and read this box here. It should explain to you why restriction enzymes cut different people's different DNA into different chunks. Pause the video now and read this, please. Okay, so next I have a tray called an electrophoresis tray and some agarose gel. It's about the consistency of finger jello, but it's made out of seaweed. Okay, I have my jello in my tray and I've also got little tiny wells here, dimples in the jello. I pour my DNA into those dimples. Now what's going to happen is that tiny pieces of DNA move quickly and larger chunks of DNA are not able to move as quickly. So when I turn the power off, I'll find the DNA chunks are spread out according to size. Pause the video now and read this bit if that didn't make sense to you. All right, I cover the whole thing with a sheet of nylon. Then with a radioactive probe that is going to bind to a particular sequence of the DNA and emit radiation. And the way we can detect radiation is with x-ray film. So we are soaking up radioactivity from those specific little chunks of DNA and I develop it. Okay, and all of this is greatly simplified but pause this and read this box if you need to. And then, based on how these chunks have spread out, big chunks of DNA, little chunks of DNA, all spread out by size by that electrical current, I can match up the pattern of my potential criminal. So I would like you to guess who you think the criminal is. Now, if this was a paternity test, only half of this DNA would match our, like if all of our fa potential fathers would only have a 50% match with our child, this black one that I'm dragging around. But the same principle would apply. So, you have some questions to do with this, please answer them on your worksheet. And have a good afternoon.